Here we are, friends, at another episode of Afghanistan by Afghans, uh, where you get to meet yet another wonderful personality, this time from Europe again, uh, my friend Maria, Maria John, not Maria, she goes, Maria is the correct pronunciation in, in Farsi and Pashto. Uh, Maria John is an artist, and she also teaches art and is also in the middle of her PhD program. And uh, we're very excited. I'm very excited to get to know a little bit more about her work. I've seen a little bit of her work and I, at the end of the show, will uh, leave some links for you to check out more of her work. Uh, but for now, let's get to know about her life. So Maria John, welcome to the show. Hello, thanks for having me here. Thanks of for the invitation. Of course, thank you. Thank you for being on the show. Um, so I always ask my guests kind of the, Start with, with, with the journey of how you got to Germany uh, from Afghanistan and where around Afghanistan you were. So tell us a little bit about your personal journey, your family's journey, wherever you want to start uh, about your journey from Afghanistan to Europe. Um, well, I was born in Afghanistan and um, I can't tell you very much about how we got to Germany, but... Um, I've spent about three years in total in Afghanistan, my first one and a half year, and then we left uh, Afghanistan for Russia because my father used to be a student back then. And after he finished he, his um, higher education, we got back to Afghanistan where he started his profession as a pilot back then. And then after I think uh, one and a half, two years, we had to leave Afghanistan. I don't know uh, much about the journey. I don't remember very much about it just a few moments like pictures, um, not very positive moments, but we arrived in Germany in 1992. And um, yeah, then I attended school here from the first grade. I, um, oh yeah, then I think between 2005 and seven, we moved to the Netherlands. So we were there for two and a half years before we came back to Germany. And basically, I, I've spent most of my life in Germany. I graduated here from school and university, and now I'm working here. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, that was a quick overview. We're going to now go back a little bit to your, your childhood a little bit. Tell us, I know Germany is uh, probably the second or the first country with the most Afghan in terms of population. Um, maybe the first in Europe, but second in the world. I think U.S. has more. Uh, but in either case, tell us a little bit, how was your experience growing up in Germany as an Afghan? Um, yes, uh, we have one of the biggest Afghan communities in Germany, but my family lived far away from that community. So we, uh, I grew up in a small village in Germany and there were no other Afghans around us, no other immigrants, basically. My brother and I were the only ones um, in school. So I grew up with Germans um, and yes, it was interesting as a child, you don't uh, see the difference between people. You just go to school and you have your peers and you learn the language and you get along with things. I think it was quite difficult for my parents because, um, because there weren't any other immigrants. They, uh, they had no access to language courses and they, I think it was, a very isolating uh, situation for my parents, no working permission, and so on and so on. I think it was very difficult for my parents. And for us, it was just like um, the story of any immigrant outside their home country. Our parents couldn't help us with uh, written uh, assignments or things like that. So we had to work a little bit harder than our classmates. But I think we managed it quite well. We graduated from the Soviet Gymnasium in Germany my brother and I, and um, that's like even a special thing for Germans because, uh, who are natives because it's like a good school. And then we started universities and we graduated from university. Of course, we also had our experiences with racism and um, on different levels. Yeah, but I think that's uh, something er any immigrant go through, any refugee and child of refugees, yeah. Yeah, of course, of course. And and you mentioned uh, university. So at uh, which point did you become interested in art? And did you study art in the university or you studied something else? Um, 
to start off? Um, growing up in Germany, uh, and we arrived in the 90s, so my parents uh, taught us we will go back one day, and then we have to rebuild the country. So I wanted to become a teacher and uh, like give something back to the society and helping girls especially to get um, education. And so I wanted to become a teacher from a very young age. And I was also very creative from a very young age. So in Germany, when you want to become a teacher, you have to choose two subjects, two main subjects. So I chose my favorite subjects, which were English and art, and uh, as a minor subject, politics. And I studied, you call it Lehramt in English. It's like becoming a teacher. You study basically two uh, subjects at the same time. So I studied English and arts. And my minor subject was politics in my bachelor's and my master's was just about arts and uh, English. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and so, of course, besides the studying it uh, on that end, art was probably part of uh, life and culture where how you grew up. So tell me kind of how, what was your first interactions with art and what type of art was it and how, how did you become interested in the arts? I've like any child I just started drawing as a child and I remember how my mom taught me how to uh, draw female faces in the refugee camp so that is my first memory of doing uh, art and basically I, I've never stopped doing arts like as any child I started in my childhood but I didn't stop and through all the experiences like moving from one country to another country from from one um, refugee camp to another one and so on and so on. Um, but art was something like a diary. I, I always used to draw. I always used to write notes down and uh, things like poetry. It wasn't really poetry, but in my head back then it was poetry. Yeah, so that's where uh, it comes from. And until today, it's still the same. Like I try to visualize my thoughts, my feelings, my experiences not just topics I want to show people and I want to focus on. I want people to focus on. Right, right. And, and uh, it's been a while, I mean, 20, 30, or probably more years that you've been active in expressing your, your thoughts and feelings in this medium, correct? Yeah, but it took some time before I decided to show my art to people because, as I said, I try to visualize my feelings and my experiences, so it's a very private thing and um, then when I started studying of course I, I didn't have much time to do that and I started um, taking part in exhibitions uh, from six years ago yeah on a professional level before that I had one experience like uh, I, I partic participated at a um, how do you say uh, it was like a German-wide um, I forgot the name for it, um, like a challenge, yeah. and, and a student's challenge. And then I, it was a, a small success back then. I was in the 12th grade, I think, or 11th grade. So that was my first experience with an exhibition. And later on uh, in 2016, after graduating, after entering my profession and having the time and the, um, yeah, basically the possibilities to do something, uh, I started uh, organizing my own exhibitions and going online and I started uh, to have the um, motivation to show my art to other people. Yeah, I see. Of course, of course. And one of these exhibitions uh, I, I know is one on Afghanistan. How recent was that? And tell us a little bit about that one. Oh, quite a few, like 50, 60 percent of my art is about Afghanistan different topics, like uh, um, there was one series which I tried to, uh, which is meant to explain the structures of Afghan society or history, and one series is just dedicated to Afghan women and empowerment and all that. So basically my first solo exhibition was about uh, Afghan culture and um, the richness of Afghan culture. And I had a very successful exhibition last year, starting in November, until uh, December uh, nearby Berlin in Potsdam. And it was called Invisible. And I tried to make all the things which are invisible to people to make it visible somehow. And especially after 
what happened in August. And um, yeah, I want to show the other perspective. That's wonderful. Yeah. And speaking off now, kind of getting into the themes of your art, um, what were some of the themes you started with? Um, you know, you're you mentioning that you were doing art as you were moving from one camp to the other as refugee camps and such. It reminded me of the war rods, which is uh, you've seen in Afghanistan, this very specific art form um, where Afghans began kind of doing their, their pains and, and what they saw the war and started doing it in the carpets um, and in the rods, um, you know, and, and, and they were uh, very quite popular art form now. So I wonder what were some themes that you began with um, as you kind of began your personal journey of the art, artistic expressions? It's very interesting because last year I went through my old uh, sketchbooks and sketches and I found a lot of uh, drawings uh, showing how a family is leaving a war behind. And um, I forgot about that, but when I saw it, it made sense because uh, like, Basically, I somehow visualized uh, the experience of fleeing in, in my pictures. I think that's one uh, of leaving Afghanistan and uh, the memories of bombings and how, yeah, basically just how my parents uh, tried to leave Afghanistan with two little kids, uh, three little kids. So that's, I think, all that kind of stuff I went through, we went through. I forgot about it, but when I see the pictures, it makes sense. Like it's a good um, way to, yeah, to I don't know to live with all that. Because I say I don't remember how we left Afghanistan, but when I see the pictures, the drawings, then I see that I used to remember things. Like wow! That. So you did draw parts of parts of your experience, even yes. though you remember it. In memory now, it, there was a time you remembered it. Is that what you're saying? When you were younger, you remembered things? Yes, and also in the very first years in, in, uh, in Germany, where uh, my parents were struggling because uh, families or relatives were still in Afghanistan and there was no WhatsApp, no Skype. So they were worried about their relatives all the time. And I think I picked all the stories up and I a lot of drawings were about war, about destruction and things like that mm -hmm. but also like fantasy things like um, stories fantasy stories or stories about heroes so it's more like storytelling my my old drawings are like storytelling mm -hmm. i find that so beautiful because these are memories that you no longer even remember but it's there in the form of a drawing yeah. um, that must be very powerful to look back at um Imagine if we all did that, you know, when we had some form of expression uh, visual and visual arts that kept it because there were no cameras back in the day either, right, to capture so much. Now there's a camera, you can capture your life every second if you wanted to. Yeah, and I remember uh, a situation from my when I was a teenager, my father wanted me to draw his parents' house. Like he explained to me how it looked and I had to draw it from my fantasy. And I still have that drawing. And that's also interesting because he wanted us to imagine how it was, but he didn't have any pictures. So that's a very nice memory I have. Wow, that's beautiful. And and did, when, did you show it to him? Did he say yeah, I looked close? Yes, he said, but I think he exaggerated because it was huge on my paint, uh, on my drawing. And uh, it was really huge. And he said, yes, yes, it's exactly like that. <laughs> Oh, that's so wonderful. <laughs> um, that's wonderful. So, I mean, your interest also kind of is in this trend, intersection of art and education, right? Um, yes. You mentioned you, you love to educate. That was your dream as a child or a teenager to be able to be of service back, whether you go back to Afghanistan or wherever. So tell me a little bit about kind of the education element. Um, where does that interest come from? Um, other than the fact that your dad said, you know, we got to go back to Afghanistan and <laughs> you thought, you know, I have to be of service somehow. Uh, but where does, yeah, any inspirations behind the education aspect? I think it's about talents. Everyone has different talents and some people are very good at math and other people are very good at computer things. Mm -hmm. And I loved studying myself. I loved drawing and writing. And at some time I realized I'm good at 
at explaining things. And then I thought it would be a good combination, the perfect job for me to combine what I love and uh, yeah, what I can do best. So uh, it's a very pragmatic <laughs> decision. And still, it's fun. To, I still love explaining things and I, I loved studying. It was very exhausting, but still I loved it. And I even was sad when my university time was over because I thought if someone was paying me, I would like to continue studying. And um, yeah, therefore I got, uh, yeah, I decided to become a teacher. And um, yeah, that's well, it. I hope that has continued. I don't know, do they pay you to do PhDs in Europe? Or no, you have to pay yourself. I have to pay myself because oh. uh, I'm I'm working full time, so I'm just doing it as a hobby. Mm -hmm. next, yeah, next to my job, beside my job. And in, in the U.S., they pay you actually to to do your PhD. Um, there are some programs yeah. you can participate in that, but they pay you. But I don't think they don't pay you very well. So that's why I decided to. I finished my higher education and uh, started my profession and then I started my PhD because you are getting some money but it's extremely uh, it's not enough to live a good life yeah and and speaking of your full-time jobs I, I know you had mentioned to me uh, it was uh, one was teaching at uh, little kids and then another teaching university let's talk a little bit about what exactly is your work with kids? Uh, what do you teach and how is that experience? Uh, I teach grades um, from the fifth grade until the to te uh, grade 10 and 11. And um, yeah, so my, my uh, official subjects are arts and English, but sometimes when there is a lack of, um, if there are not enough teachers, so you have to do something else as well. So. I have experience in teaching religion, for example, religious education. And um, yeah, that's what I do in school. I study politics as well, but I don't teach it currently because there is no need <laughs> for that. And um, yeah, once or twice a week, I am uh, teaching at university and um, I'm teaching future teachers who are doing their master's degree, because, but for two years now, because now I have enough experience and I can give something back to students of the university. Mm. Okay. So this is a teacher's program? That we're... Yes, it's basically at the same university I've studied and um, that university is quite famous because we have a very special uh, teacher's program and um, like you have, a, you get a lot of experience, practical experience, you go to schools from the very first semester and that's unusual in Germany. So because I liked my higher education very much, I wanted to go back uh, later on. And uh, yeah, I started two years ago at the university and um, it's fun. Okay, great. <laughs> um, well, since you're great at explaining things, um, uh, one thing I would love to know is about the concept of your art and identity. Um, I know you came out of Afghanistan at such a young age and, and kind of grew up with an Afghan family. Uh, but maybe there are also other identities that you adopt, you know, the German identity, maybe there are other identities, cultural, religious and such. Tell me, how do you explore um, identity with your art? What, how do you, um, what sort of art projects have you done so far to kind of explore that? Identity is one of my favorite subjects, um, elements in arts, because it is an issue, it is a topic. Growing up with, with Germans only, I felt like an alien, like with my, uh, I was, I had friends and um, I talked German very well without an accent and all that, and I felt German. But at some points I realized that um, I am not German. And at home, it was the same thing. Like we were raised very Afghan and my parents tried to give us uh, all the Afghan education, but still we were not very Afghan because at some point um, our language skills got worse and worse. We forgot Dari and our Pashto was just like someone at a primary school level and our German became better and better. So I was struggling in who am I? And there was a time I didn't feel uh, like I belong to any of those cultures 
nowadays I think I belong to both cultures and that we have a separate culture like all the Afghans in the diaspora. I think we ha all of us have like, um, I have a German side of identity and uh, for example, Afghan Americans have that American side and then we have our Afghan side which our parents gave us. We have also a separate one, our own diaspora identity. So, and then going through different phases of life, uh, I also try to visualize it. So when people who know me will see in my paintings, like parts of my own story, like what I went through. And uh, I have one series, uh, which is especially just about me. It's called Self Search. And um, there are three pieces and I will add more to it. And it's like a documentation of my own view of my own character and my development. So identity is a huge thing. Yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, tell me a little more about this specific piece. So is it a series? When did you start this? The one about yourself? And what I incorporated? It, I started it in 2015 or 16. After I went through a hard time. So then I took some time for myself and I started drawing and painting and again after a long period of pause. And it started with me in the universe, I think lost in the universe, something like lost me and my thoughts and everything. And then there is another piece uh, where I'm very silent and uh, thinking, not lost, but still thinking in my thoughts and then the last piece of it is like how how I felt empowered and like I felt okay I found myself and I know um, that I went through uh, an interesting development it's it's very personal basically and it might sound a little bit cliche but uh, like in cliche but it's how I felt and I tried to do that and it's called self-search and yeah, basically, I this year, it's, it was six years ago, and, and this year I thought it's time to add another piece of, uh, to it, because I went through many interesting, uh, also hurtful <laughs> periods, uh, so, yeah. So anytime there's a pain, you, you, you add a series to it. <laughs> a pain or uh, something special, it, it doesn't need to be negative, but of course. See, it's a very useful coping mechanism <laughs> to draw and paint and to i think it's it, it's very nice to turn if you go through pain to turn that into something creative and powerful mm -hmm. yeah that's what i that's why I, I love art in so many ways is because it allows you to express pain in in, in such creative ways and be become like resilient almost you know kind of output something beautiful out of out of your pain um which again and, yeah and also i love art because of course there's one very personal part of my uh journey i'm visualizing but also i think it's a very good tool to visualize very complex uh things like the afghan identity itself or the afghan story and in my exhibitions like you can have three lectures about something but you have one drawing or one painting and it will make something with the audience positive or negative and they start talking about it and then it's easier to explain things through art yeah that's great yeah so you have the personal side which you kind of explore identity with um which i knew that you there would be something in there because all art is kind of identity artists and people in diaspora you know identity is such a big part of who we are because you know we're a generation of two different uh geographies or cultures and such um you mentioned that half of your other arts or, or your collected body of arts is about afghanistan uh tell me a little bit about uh what are some pieces and that what have you explored when it comes to afghanistan with your art um i have i have several series uh, one is called Black and Afghanistan, Black and White, question mark. And it's a series of portraits in black and white. And I try to explain the structure of Afghan society, but also the different phases of Afghan history just by using portraits like um, Ahmad Zahir's portrait or Dr. Najib's portrait and so on to show different phases of Afghan history. 
but also the structure of Afghan families, for example, that the, the elder um, man in a family is very powerful, but also the elderly woman and things like that. For example, that's one series, um, which is very meaningful to me because, and it's called Afghanistan Black and White because like the Western world has just one black and white image of Afghanistan, but it's much more. And so that's like provoking people to think about it. What can the, uh, what is this face telling me right now or to think a little bit about it. And then I have a series of um, Rangin, uh, my very first uh, solo exhibition and it is dedicated to Afghan women. And I wanted to empower women by visualizing them, by showing the beauty of Afghan dresses, the um, diversity of Afghan dresses, because you can see from the dresses where someone is from and which ethnicity and everything, uh, and also the new designs, for example, the old design versus uh, the new designs and the colors and all the elements like mirrors and so on. So it's like cultural education through art. Yeah. And, and which sort of mediums are these uh, are and is it um, you utilize digital art, painting, photography or mix of all? What are you mostly used to? I mostly use uh, acrylic paint on canvases, uh, drawings and paintings, but I also like to create different videos or things like that. Sometimes I write some pieces. Um, yeah. Things like that. Have you shared your writing yet? I haven't seen any of your writing on your social media. Not very often or as a story, but I'm planning to do so. So right now I'm just uh, typing uh, all my writings in the computer. So because it's handwritten, um, yeah, handwritten, sorry. <laughs> well, I hope we get to hear uh, or see or read uh, that as well, because your visual poetry definitely has that powerful impact. Um, I'm sure your words will will have it as well. So, um, so I thank you very much, Maria John, for for being on the show. Um, I think it was very illuminating to to have this conversation with you and learn a little bit about you and your art. Um, as we kind of conclude, where can audiences who are interested in your art find your work uh, at online or physically? Um, I didn't hear you. Sorry, you, the connection. Okay. Where where can audiences find your work other than your Instagram and social media? Where else can they see your artwork? I have a website. It's called mariasartgallery.com. So um, from there you can find all my social media. And uh, I'm on YouTube. I'm basically everywhere. So when you go to my website, you will find uh, information on my work. Thank you. Thank you, Marika. So um, thank you very much. We'll put a link to her work. Uh, and the bottom of the description. Uh, I thank you guys for listening in and I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Uh, if you like this, there's more in the series with more Afghan artists and Afghans from all walks of life. So go ahead and check those out. And until next time, thank you very much for listening in and thank you as well, Maria John again. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Bye-bye.